Hello and welcome. My name is Robin and this is Battleground Eternia, the podcast for the new skirmish war game Masters of the Universe Battleground by Arkan Studio. Hello and welcome to the second episode of the English edition of Battleground Eternia. Today we are going wild. We are going to talk about He-Man with Battlecat. But before this we are going to talk about the news. So let's see. There is a small addition to the Wave 1 release I already talked about the last time we have heard each other. The release date is the 21st of July. It will be available in English, German and Polish. We have already seen the content of the box. So, these pictures, you remember? But within the last days I just realized a small fact hiding within the list of the box content. On the pictures we do see 11 cards which will be in those boxes, but the list says there are going to be 16 cards, so a lot more than we, or at least I, thought. We also learned that the portals within the defender's box are no portals but force fields and these small hexes within the evil warriors box are used to teleport units. Those items are not limited to the faction they come with. They are related to general items, so any model or any team could use them. It makes it fair, but hmm. at the moment I fear a little bit that each faction could lose a tiny bit of its individual playstyle. But we will have to see how it really works out. And another news is from the last live stream. There was something good and something bad, I guess. Uh, with which one should I start? Uh, it's always better to get the bad news first. Or at the new roadmap for Battleground, the Horde vanished. Probably it was pushed back to next year, but we were not given any reasons why. The good one is that we will get some Wave 2 teasers soon, and the information was given that this release, or probably the Wave after this, will contain some more large units. Probably those are going to be vehicles like the uh, Landshark. I don't know. I think that this is great, but I hope that the size will be right and not just those vehicles are... I could imagine that those are being a little bit small on this on if they got the same base as Battlecat. All we could do at the moment is waiting for some more information. Until then, let's start with something good. Let's talk about He-Man with Battle Cat. Oh, and I almost forgot another really, really important news. And this is that I just enlisted for the first Masters of the Universe Battleground Tournament. It will be held on Sunday the 21st of August in Oberhausen at the Diversitas shop. 
I'm really, really looking forward and maybe I will be able to win my second battle cat. <laughs> We're going to see and I'm going to tell you how it all went. So let's have a look at battle cat's background. He is the faithful companion of He-Man, his combat tiger who is always by his side. But just as his master, this is just another secret identity which he takes on whenever Prince Adam uses his sword to transform himself into He-Man. Normally he is known as Cringer, the pet of Adam. But his story does go somewhat deeper. Just a little bit, as we already know. <laughs> Adam found Cringer when he was still a cub. He was starving and badly hurt. Adam took that bunch of green fur home and nursed him back to health. In the beginning, Cringer didn't know about Adam's secret identity, but one day he followed him secretly and was transformed into the mighty Battle Cat. There is another backstory from the old mini comics. In those stories, Cringer is not transformed into Battle Cat, but he is a wild animal which is living in the deep woods and rushes for help when He-Man is calling him. <laughs> Sounds dramatic. But let's have a look on Battle Cat's stats, okay? I'll get his card. He has a health of 8, toughness 3, mind 3, power 3, perception 3, strange 5, <laughs> and a movement value of 5, 5. So, hmm, looks slow, but just wait a minute. His two skills are lead by example which does cost two mana any ally within 12 inch can use this skill as their own he man interrupts this ally's activation or interruption during this interruption he man can move in any direction here it is important to remember that attacks made during an interruption have to be made against the interrupted opponent, so Battle Cat is not able to attack with a skill, but he gets so fast with it. It is great, huh? Just as a small spoiler. His other ability is Tiger's Claw which does cost 1 AP and 1 single point of mana. It reads, Test Strange minus 1 against the toughness of an enemy engaged with He-Man. 1 success means 1 damage, 2 successes, 1 damage and a knockdown. To go a little further, in average you will receive 0.5 five, six net successes. Not that much, but he will do a single point of damage. Here you have to remember that this is not an attack, so it will not benefit from combat related bonuses. This is a skill and has to be pushed with other items. But let us talk about this in a minute too. His basic equipment is the Sword of Power. We already know this from the single He-Man miniature. It is a unique item, a close combat weapon. It does no dice modifications and does 1, 2 and 3 damage for 1, 3 and 5 net successes. We talked about it a lot in the last episode. So... If you missed it, go back and please listen to this episode again. He could be equipped with one close combat weapon, one ranged weapon, one shield and three trinkets. 
Battlecat alone has a cost of 30 points and the cost of a sword is 3 points. So he is, without any upgrades, really expensive. It will take a third of your points. This is something you have to think about if you want to lead this animal to the battleground. In a lot of ways, Battle Cat is very similar to He-Man. So, the model. He is not tougher or stronger than He-Man. He has just more health, so he will survive longer. The probabilities are the same as we've talked about in the last episode. So in melee he will get an average of 1.1 net successes or two with a focus marker which could be pushed by his sword to an average 2.8 net successes or 4.1 net successes if you spend a lot of mana. You have to remember that each mana spent on rerolls gives him statistically one net success. But he's not that tough. He will reduce the damage pool of its enemies by 1.5 or 2 successes with his toughness and his might stat. So just like He-Man, he is a little bit fragile for being He-Man. But uh, this is okay. He has a lot of health, so he could take a punch. On the first look, we have again a strong and hard-hitting monster. This is the first time we see a model on a big base in action. He seems to be somewhat slower, but his opponents will find it hard to ignore or circumvent him. But this could get problematic for him too, because movement stops the moment you make contact with an opponent's base. I think a lead by example could be really, really strong if you use it the right way and Tiger's Claw is a nice finisher. As a first look, but let's go a little bit deeper. In my opinion, Battle Cat's motto is victory through mobility. Okay, he has just five movement and will not benefit from focus tokens, but he has a few aces up his sleeves. The first and most potent is lead by example. This could be used to get him where he is needed at the moment. Remember that this skill can't be used to attack, just to move and maybe to cast a spell on the allied model. But at the moment there are no spells which do buff allies and do not need a spell slot. But who knows what is waiting for us in the future. His mobility could be combined with some items to make him even stronger or faster or dangerous, or anything you like of a big green tiger. There is an important thing to talk about related to movement, and these are obstacles. He has a kind of hate-love relationship with those. He loves low obstacles because they make him faster, because he has to spend just three movement points to place his whole base behind a low obstacle, which means he moves four hexes. But on the other side, high obstacles could be used by his opponents to play a kind of uh, cat and mice games. With his movement value of 5, Battle Cat has the problem that he just can't climb over high obstacles. Just as a small side note, this problem could be solved with a jetpack, which started as a joke about the Rocket Tiger at our Discord server, but could make a lot of sense. This could be used to circumvent an opponent who blocks a pass Battle Cat wants to take. Another point to have in mind is his big base. 
he could use this to block important passes, but he is easily blocked too. And please remember that Battlecat does need a lot of space to move. There might be areas which he just can't go through because of his size, but this will not often be a problem. His mobility allows him to be played in two different ways. You could concentrate his own activations for strong attacks or punish the opponent during his interruptions, which requires very different equipment. Talking about equipment. It is so sad that Battlecat could only get a shield and not some armor, because Battlecat would love to have the helmet. So here are some more options for him, but remember that Battlecat does already cost 30 points just for himself. So he gets very expensive fast. Let's have a look at the close combat weapons. If you play him offensively, the sort of power for three points is a good idea. But Battle Cat does like the Battle Axe too. This is more expensive with five points, so you have to yeah, think about if it's worth it. You could bring him in position with Lead by Example and use its own action points to move and attack, which makes it much easier to benefit from the Axis bonus. If you prefer the more reactive playstyle, you could buy, you could get him the Terror Claws. In that case, Battle Cat needs to be placed where the opponent needs to move and then uses his own interruptions to attack twice. The plus one bonus they provide is nice too. The Terror Claws make it even possible to close whole passes. So just place him so that the enemy can't go behind you and he, they have to either fight you, which most will not want to do, or leave you. In that case, you're getting two bonus attacks or attacks of opportunity, which is a very, very good a tactic for him to use. Another weapon he could use are the Flying Fist which provides him with some needed focus tokens and gets him some more movement. And more is always more. Ranged weapons are another good way to play Battle Cat reactively. You could bring him in position with the lead by example, use the Wheel of Infinity to get another Overwatch token and shoot everything that comes close to him. But his perception of three might be problematic, so weapons which provide a bonus die are welcome. And remember that there are other characters better suited for this playstyle. The Photon Neutralizer for three points is a good choice for him. With a range of 16, the provided bonus die, and the possible next overwatch marker waiting makes this a really really good choice. Another way would be the blaster. It does cost 4 points, but you will need a good source for focus tokens on Battle Cat. The blaster is always a good choice, but it is good on any model that's want to shoot. Battle Cat could equip a shield too. But not buying him one is a good way to save some points. If you really want him a little bit more tougher, the shield of your choice depends on the style of play you prefer. And on the trinkets, the possibilities are almost limitless. Battle Cats likes a lot of shiny stuff, so you should choose what makes him better on the role that you want him to play. Here are some possibilities. The Wheel of Infinity for two wheels. 
<laughs> this is so good on Battle Cat. No matter how you play him, you get a free Overwatch marker after any interruption where you did not attack. And lead by example is an interruption where you can't attack. So any time you use lead by example, you get a free follow up token. I would get the wheel any time for Battle Cat. This is a true must buy item. I told you earlier that the jetpack for three points could be very useful to jump over high obstacles or enemies who are blocking Battle Cat's pass. It is nice, it could surprise your opponent, but it is not as useful as the wheel. Something more useful is the ram stone. It does cost two points. And if you play him offensively with the battle axe, you always want this item too. It boosts your already impressive dice pool and maximizes the damage you do. The gray skull ring for two points is a good source for focus tokens on Battle Cat. It's always good to have. And lastly, the gem of damage. Again, it does cost two points. If you play him reactively, the plus one dies to attacks made during an interruption are always good. You see, there are so many possibilities you could choose from, but remember that this is going to get expensive very fast. And while he may be a good centerpiece for your team, there are others who want some love too. Oh, I just realized that we have not talked about his second skill, Tiger's Claw. It is important to know that this is not an attack but a skill. The most useful way for it is to use it as a finishing move. For just two action points you could first strike at your opponent and if he is still standing after this you could do a follow-up attack for just one more AP. This is especially handy if the opponent survives with just a single point of health left. I know, there are a lot of ways to attack twice for 2 AP in a single round. But you could always use it without the need of special fate cards or something like this. So let's have a look. I really like He-Man with Battle Cat. He's fast and strong, but he has his disadvantages too. He is able to take more damage than his cousin on food. But just because he has three points more health, that means that he might just take one or two more hits if he is not played carefully. And another big drawback, what could prevent him from being played, is the amount of points he costs. Just with the sword of power he does cost 33 points, which is a third of your available points. So you have to decide to play with him and just four or probably three other models and that could become a huge problem. You will have a lot of fate cards to push your activations but opponents with more activations will find it easy to claim mission tokens. Oh, and there is another problem we have to talk about. And that is his availability. He was just handed out as a proportion manager to retailers. They got one mini for every three pre-ordered 
starter set boxes and they should use it as a tournament prize or something like this. And this means that at the moment it is not possible for everyone to get a battle cat. This made a lot of people really upset, but I'm pretty sure that this is not dramatic as it seems. Remember the news? More large miniatures are coming soon. And I can already said that this model will be available at shows like Essen Spiel in October. So there are a lot of pros and cons to consider, but this makes Battlecat such a well designed character. You have to make decisions and decide if the drawbacks are worth the pay. I am sure that I will give him a chance on the tabletop as soon as possible. Until then, I really hope that you enjoyed this episode and maybe even learned a little bit about how to handle this wild animal. If you have any feedback for me, feel free to comment anywhere you found this episode. Write me an email to bg-eternia at mail.de or just join our Discord server. The link for this is within the show notes. And I hope too that you will come back next time for the next episode of Battleground Eternia. Climb by Shane Ivers at https double point double slash silvermansound.com. Sound effects obtained from https double point double slash zapsplat.com.